Because as long as he got the masses of the people behind him, he has the power. So again, your politicians are petrified of the mass. They don't want the masses to come together because mm -hmm. that's their pressure on them. In all honesty, here's where the downfall of the civil rights movement, in my opinion, comes to play. Because um, one of Martin Luther King's final speeches to the black people, the black nation, was the burning house speech. He admitted, hey, you know, I thought integration was going to be the answer, guys. I really did. I thought that we were going to get equality. We were going to integrate. We are going to make a difference. We are all going to be considered one and no more of this racism stuff. And then he finds out, no, I made a mistake. Mm. Because what really gives us our voice and our position is economical and political power. Mm. And that was his final speech to the people. To me, that's the, that, that's the last piece of the blueprint that was left that we have to pick up, which was that we have to look past integration. It's not the answer. The mm. answer is political and economical power because whoever controls the money controls pretty much everything at that point. And so political power is designed behind controlling that economical wealth. Right, right. Now, who has that? Well, we know that. Exactly. Now, who wrote the Constitution? I tell people all the time, <laughs> I tell people all the time, who wrote the Constitution? White male slave owners. So the interest of this country when it was being involved mm -hmm. and developed was never for anybody but white male affluent, period, including our women. See, that's the crazy part. That's why women's suffrage was such a big deal because it was one of the first times where you saw black and white women put color to the side and say, you know what, we're women. And yeah. we are sick of being treated subpar, substandard, subvoice, sub everything to these idiotic men who act like they know what they're doing. So women's suffrage was an opportunity to see true unification in that concept because women came together as one and said, no, we as women have a voice. We have a right to. We're not just here to wash your butts and keep food on the table. We're mm -hmm. here to do a whole lot more and we're greater than that. Um, but, you know, then you move into the civil rights movement. And, you know, one of the things that I find frustrating as a black leader, as a black activist, is that the truth is out there that the black movement has always been pulled to help others. You know, the women's suffrage was the first one to me, in my opinion, because we were already fighting for civil rights then. You right, know, right, slaves right. were already uh, rioting, lynches were already happening. A lot of things were already going on with black people then. Right, but right. the women came in and joined the black movement long enough to gain what they wanted. And then once the women's rights fell down and everybody got their little amendments and their rights to vote and stuff, they ran out the door again. So, oh, that's back to your black problem. It ain't our problem no more. And they ran out on us, you know? Right, right. Um, and, you know, that's been repeated time and time through history, you know. Uh, why was MLK killed? MLK killed was because, not because he was in Memphis trying to, you know, get black people to rally. MLK was in Memphis to get sanitation workers to strike and form a union. And when they uh, saw that, they realized that this powerful man who already marched, uh, whoever, who did the first ever million men march to D.C., and it was by accident. It wasn't designed. He wasn't trying to march a million people up there. The goal was only 100,000 people. People just heard him, him coming through and started hopping on with him and walked all the way up there to D.C. with him. And then white politicians up there in D.C. didn't think Martin Luther King could even get two people there. He showed up with a million people. So you better believe that day that he gave the I Have a Dream speech, he freaked them out because they didn't think he even had the capability. And when they saw all that they realize this man is too powerful. Yeah. He can want me to do whatever he wants to do because as long as he got the masses of the people behind him, he has the power. So again, your politicians are petrified of the mass. They don't want the masses to come together because mm -hmm. that's their pressure on them. And I keep telling people, you know what I mean? People are in your federal government that make your decisions every day of your life. How many? 500. 500 people decide what this country is going to be like every single day. That may, that's about right to what, 50 states? Yeah, it's like 50 states, it's like 200 something in the House and 200 so in the Senate. And then you got your president and his various committees and oversights and stuff like that. But all together, it's 500 people that decide for 7 billion people right. what's going to happen. Gonna happen yeah. And that to me is definitely not proportional to representation at all. <laughs>